Courtney Comox. Honourable Speaker, I rise today to address the motion of the, from the member of, of, of Surrey White Rock uh, on overcoming the opioid ap epidemic. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the personal heartbreak of each of those left behind after a toxic drug supply has taken a son or daughter, a brother or sister, a spouse or parent, a friend or neighbour. Every community is home to lives cut short, and Courtney Comox is not shielded from these tragedies. In the midst of this public health emergency, it's important to acknowledge and appreciation all the frontline workers who carry on in the helping professions to provide substance use, supports and services, and all those who respond to these traumatizing life and death emergencies. The worldwide COVID-19 pandemic has magnified the impact of the toxic drug supply as the supply chain has been interrupted, introducing more toxic street drugs to first-time users as well as those who've been hooked long-term. There's also the impacts of isolation. We're living in a time no one has ever experienced before, and COVID-19 is causing more stress, pain, and loneliness, leading some to seek a potentially poisonous road to relief. One of the most risky things people can do is use alone, but COVID-19 has kept people apart. Most of the toxic opioid deaths occur alone at home. The growing opioid crisis is declared a public health was declared a public health emergency by BC's provincial health officer in the spring of 2016, before we formed government. Meeting people's needs has been and continues to be our priority. Leading our premier to appoint a minister of mental health and addictions to his first cabinet in 2017, it's the first in any jurisdiction in Canada. One leader who would focus on tackling the opioid crisis and building a system of mental health and substance use supports that work for everyone. We, are, we were going in the right direction before COVID-19 hit as the number of deaths were going down. And so in response, in another historic first, Budget 2021 provides a half a billion dollar investment for this ministry over the next three years. The minister is mandated to work toward decriminalization of small amounts of personal use illicit drugs and in the absence of the federal government acting to develop a made in BC solution that will help save lives. The minister is mandated to accelerate BC's response to the opioid crisis across the full continu continuum of care, prevention, harm reduction, safe prescription medications, treatment and recovery, and to explore new ways to help prescribers separate more people from the toxic drug supply through safe prescription alternatives. These measures are also reflective of the calls to action that are sounding from healthcare providers, people with lived and living experience, police chiefs and communities alike. A pathway to hope is our 10-year roadmap for making mental health and substance use care better for people. We've completed two years of the first three-year plan. Last month, the progress report was issued indicating that priority services and supports are rolling out. More than half of the three-year priority actions identified in the pathway to hope are now implemented with the remaining actions well underway. I appreciate the opportunity to share the extent of our government's commitment to meet people's needs when it comes to mental health and substance use. The comprehensive work our government is undertaking is far from over. Mental health services and rapid response teams were part of the $225 million pandemic response measures, more than a quarter of the $500 million current three-year budget is dedicated to substance use for better care and saving lives, more than 40% for overdose response, a further 18% for children and youth and young adults. The drug poisoning crisis did not appear overnight, and there is no magic bullet to end the crisis. And government cannot do it alone. As we have learned from the earliest days of COVID-19, our best way forward is to act together. We're motivated by what we've heard from people with lived and living experience. 
In addressing the opioid crisis, we have prioritized the three sides that create the strong uh, triangle of a strong response, response for everyone throughout British Columbia. It's safe supply, strong supports, and ending stigma. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.